हरि ओम सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट पोस्टनाटल डिप्रेशन दिस इज अ कंडीशन दैट अफेक्ट्स मेनी मदर्स व्हेन द बेबी इज बोर्न डिप्रेशन इज अ वेरी इंटेंस मेंटल हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम एंड इट कैन रियली ब्रिंग द quality of life down so what is it this postnatal depression is also called a postpartum depression or ppd as a short form basically the depression is a mood disorders one of the mood disorder there is many other mood disorders such as major depressive disorder unipolar disorder depression or bipolar disorder where depression and mania are present so in that category the postnatal depression is classified especially it happens after the baby is born mostly it happens to the mothers but there are some studies they say that it can affect the partner also but the percentage is very very low statistically seeing the numbers about 15% of the mothers may get this postnatal depression now there's a criteria set by american psychiatric association and that criteria is called dsm 5 the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental health problems version 5 and in that the postpartum depression is diagnosed under depressive disorder with peripartum onset where this peripartum onset is any time even during the pregnancy or immediately followed by the delivery the postpartum depression can last for few months or even a year or even longer than that so now how to recognize how to understand this depression so let's study the symptoms of this depression first of all the mother who is experiencing depression there is a loss of interest in life lack of interest in the activities that she used to enjoy before the onset of this depression for example the woman loves eating particular food but if the depression is there then she doesn't want to eat that particular food and this can extend to any activity then the next symptom is there is a persistent feeling of sadness or there is constant anxiety or feeling very low emptiness and these symptoms certainly affect the behavior in a big way the inability to take care of the baby the feeling is there this is another symptom even if the baby needs help the mother feels that she really can't take care of the baby she also can feel agitated or irritable or angry sometimes or sometimes really not concerned or apathetic or can't be bothered 
then there is some kind of guilt or she is blaming herself or low self esteem she doesn't value herself the worthlessness is there some kind of shame is there now this feelings of guilt and self blame interestingly the people who experience depression they try and find selectively such reasons ha huh, sometimes the reasons can be quite big and powerful and then they drive you to the depression that is also a possibility moving ahead there are many more symptoms so we'll go through one by one a hallmark symptom of depression is hopelessness there is no hope about tomorrow so the person doesn't believe that the situation will get better tomorrow and there is helplessness the person feels that he is unable to change anything he can't really do much to improve his life or come out of this situation or make an effort then of course all of these symptoms naturally Uh, create problems when it comes to bonding with the baby or the person may not enjoy the company of the baby now this is quite serious this symptom is very negative as far as the bonding is concerned and it certainly affects the baby as well now these symptoms affect your day to day life and they reduce the quality of life naturally the relationship with the baby is affected with the partner is affected with the other family members with friends and also the person can experience severe mood swings sometime the person is crying sometime the person is more anxious sometime the person is very stressed so these symptoms are very debilitating and they hurt the person the person is suffering inside now let's focus on some behavioral symptoms lack of interest and pleasure in usual activities say the person enjoys exercise but he loses or she loses the interest in exercise or lack of energy and feeling of tiredness all through the day the person just wants to sleep or just wants to sit doesn't want to move doesn't want to even do the regular work because of this tiredness and lack of energy low libido there's no sexual desire of course this can be misinterpreted or misunderstood sometimes as the new mother when the baby is born naturally the uh, desire for the sexual relations goes down and that's quite natural but if the depression is there then this becomes even more pronounced then another significant behavioral symptom is loss of appetite or increased appetite ha both can happen some people may just not eat at all and lose weight and some people will only eat that's something called comfort eating so you just keep eating all through the day and mostly the food that is preferred is junk food unhealthy food which easily makes the person put on weight or if the person doesn't eat then the person will lose the weight so this is a significant symptom of depression there is fatigue and there is no motivation to do anything if you ask the person hey should we do this 
let's go and practice yoga the person has no motivation although the person or the mother herself is a yoga teacher or she has been practicing this but if she is depressed then there will be no motivation even for the activity that she really likes and she is good at another behavioral symptom is poor self care not looking at yourself not taking of not taking care of yourself not eating properly not doing exercises properly not reading good things for you, for yourself then also social withdrawal is a very important symptom the person is not interested in contacting his friends or her friends the person is not replying to the messages and emails or will not reply the call the person if invited to a social gathering or uh, at friends place or a party the person will prefer not to go there and another very significant symptom is connected with the sleep insomnia or lack of sleep can be there because of depression or sometimes the excessive sleep is there because of depression so like you don't eat much or you eat too much similarly sleep also you don't sleep much or you sleep too much or sometimes the person has trouble sleeping in the night and then feels very sleepy the whole day because there is no enough sleep now moving ahead there are some cognitive symptoms the first of them is problems concentrating if one if the person is doing one task the person cannot really focus and concentrate if especially if she or he is reading a book can't really concentrate also another problem is inability to make decisions if the person has to decide whether she should go to that place or not it's very difficult for her to make decisions and then that lack of concentration also results in poor memory you can easily forget things you can even forget basic things like taking care of the baby or maybe even you you can even forget to feed the baby on time sometimes there is a fear that you cannot take care of the baby or you are scared of the baby these are very serious symptoms that depression can bring then there are some fearful thoughts like the person thinks that oh she is going to hurt her baby although she is not doing anything by mistake she just keeps feeling this that oh she may hurt the baby and that can be very disturbing to her then the last very serious symptom is thinking about suicide and this is where you need a medical intervention of course you need medical intervention in the previous symptoms as well if they are affecting the quality of your life but then this is very serious which may even need hospital admissions the suicidal th- thoughts and self harming thoughts or harming the baby or harming the partner thoughts related to that can be very negative and can affect the health very negatively 
so these are all the symptoms the symptoms all of them may not be present but some of these symptoms will certainly be there in depression so of course if you experience these symptoms in 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 a mother or in someone who just had baby it's important that you take you seek medical help you seek you seek professional help yoga can certainly help in this area but then it's better that the medical professionals who are empowered to make proper decisions should guide that person to come to yoga moving ahead what are the causes or risk factors for this postnatal depression of course it's not very well understood yet what what is causing this but some of the risk factors and causes are as following as following there are hormonal changes that take place in the body during the pregnancy and when the baby is born again the changes that have taken place the body starts going back to its normalcy and this changes during the pregnancy and then after the pregnancy can be very intense on the body that can cause the postnatal depression another cause is genetics if there is a family history of depression from mother's side or father's side then the person is more at risk to develop this depression or sometimes some major life events such as death of a family member or sudden loss of job or break up of relationships or some other major life event can also be a reason for this postpartum depression another cause could be to do with the total lifestyle change that happens after the baby is born everything is completely new for the mother she has a life to look after a little life to look after which previously she was not aware of so this can also be a reason for the depression many other risk factors are there if the depression is there before the birth that is prenatal period or there is anxiety in the pregnancy that anxiety and that depression in the pregnancy can lead to postnatal depression if there is a family history of depression this point i already discussed and this is a very big risk factor so it's all, always good to ask the person if there is any family history of depression or anxiety uh, or mood any other mood disorders in the family then moderate to severe premenstrual symptoms if a woman is experiencing then certainly it's a risk factor the next risk factor is maternity blues or postpartum blues now this is a condition which almost 80% women experience this is a condition that is characterized by some mood swings or tear uh, like feeling of crying or sometimes there is excitement with the baby also generally this condition goes away within couple of weeks 
it doesn't last but if this is there then it, this is also a risk factor for depression so if it stays on for longer then it can be a risk factor also during the birth if there is a physical trauma or there are some complications or if there is a psychological trauma during birth then that can also be a risk factor or if the woman has experienced some kind of miscarriage in the past or some stillbirth in the past then that can also raise the risk of depression some studies have indicated that if the baby is feeding on formula and not on breastfeeding then that can be a risk factor for the mother's depression now this is interesting of course there is mixed evidence but certainly some studies point out that if the mother is not feeding the baby with the breast milk or he is the baby is not feeding on the breast then there is a risk that she may get in depression cigarette smoking is a big risk factor it's also known to cause lot of problems for the baby later on but it is still a risk factor for the depression then low self esteem if the woman has low self esteem then there is more chance that she'll get depressed and of course social support if it is not available easily especially only the wife and the husband and when the baby comes into their life there is no third person to support and the husband is working probably the mother also has lot of things to do so this kind of lack of social support can cause depression low socio economic status some studies indicate that the socio economic status certainly influences the mental health another risk factor and understandably so if there is a problem with the relationship between the partners or husband or the person is single or she is single mother then certainly there is more chance that she may experience the depression sometimes the the little baby has problems like the baby is colic so he can't really digest the milk so he keeps crying all the time and that crying or that temperamental behavior of the baby can also cause depression additionally if that pregnancy is not very well planned and it is unwanted pregnancy just happened it was not really planned thoroughly then that can also create problems depletion of oxytocin hormone and elevated prolactin hormone levels are also implicated as the risk factors for depression and in the society we see often the abuses against the women and violence against women which is quite common and this is a big risk factor for the depression sadly even in this century this violence and abuse is continuing and it affects not only her mental health but it affects the health of the baby so this violence is actually over creating our next generations in a negative in a negative way influencing them in a negative way so previously i had some i had discussed some risk factors with you about depression but there's another condition which i briefly mentioned that is maternity blues 
or is also called as postpartum blues or is also known as baby blues now it can happen up to 80 per, happen to up to 80% women and the reason for that is mostly the hormonal changes that happen followed by the birth but they typically the symptoms typically go away within 2 weeks but the symptoms are quite similar to depression so sometimes this postpartum blues can be misunderstood as depression so you just need to be careful when uh, you come across such symptoms that the mother is exhibiting whether it's postpartum blues or depression so it's important that you understand this also so this is about depression and various symptoms and risk factors of course yoga techniques and yoga practices help these conditions and these will be covered in other lectures so i hope you understand basic thing about this depression so i'm going to stop here thank you